Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Franklin. I'm one of the two co-founders of the Northern California Spinal Cord Injury Foundation, also known as NorCal SCI. Welcome to tonight's presentation. It's part of our Virtual is a New Reality series made possible through a generous grant from the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. I'm uh, very pleased to have a good friend, Stephanie Camella, uh, leading a presentation on how to build a gym for under $50. Yes, it's true, it can be done and she will show you how to do it. Um, okay, so a couple of housekeeping items as usual. Uh, everyone has been muted so that we could eliminate any sort of background noise distractions. So do not be wondering about that. And then the second thing is that uh, we are going to have a Q&A session at the end. So Stephanie's presentation is gonna be about 45 minutes long and we'll have about 10, 15 minutes towards the end for Q&As, which you can, direct any questions that you may have through the chat button on your screen. Uh, we will ask those uh, towards the end of the presentation. And then the second thing um, also is we are recording uh, this presentation. So if any of you need to step away or jump off the, the call because you may be wanting to watch the debate, which I don't have any idea why anyone in their right mind would wanna do that tonight, but let's just say that you do want to. So. Uh, no worries, uh, we are recording the presentation and we'll make it available to everyone who registered for it. Uh, on Monday, you'll get an email from uh, NorCal SCI with the link to the YouTube recording. Uh, so that's everything that I wanna share with you. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Stephanie. Uh, she has engaged in over 20,000 hours working directly with individuals with spinal cord injuries and other neurological disorders since 2011. Stephanie has a BS degree in exercise biology from University of California and was first introduced to Pilates in 2014 and quickly transitioned to this new model, starting a Pilates-based SCR recovery program in 2015 um, at the Absolute Center in Lafayette. Uh, she is a Pilates Method Alliance uh, nationally certified Pilates teacher through Balanced Body, as well as an American Council on Exercise Professional since 2008. Stephanie blends her formal education, Pilates and other mindful movement modalities and neurological science to provide an intuitive, hands-on style of teaching focused on body reconnection. Uh, she's also a co-founder of Zebrafish uh, Neuro and along with her uh, partner in crime and fellow co-founder, uh, Theo St. Francis, uh, they published a 300-page book uh, earlier this year called From the Ground Up, a Human-Powered uh, Framework for Spinal Cord Injury Recovery. And she'll talk about that uh, towards the end of our presentation. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Stephanie. Stephanie, you there? That's me. There you go. <laughs> Here I am. Hi guys, good evening. Uh, thanks for taking time out of your uh, day or evening um, to come to this presentation. I know Franklin has put so much work into making these available to you, so I'm glad you guys are taking advantage of it. Can you guys hear me okay? Give me like a nod or some sort of, okay, awesome, great. So I'm gonna screen share. Tonight's presentation, um, as Franklin said, is gonna be about equipping your home space with versatile, small, simple, but versatile and valuable pieces um, that will keep you guys moving and healthy. It's gonna be a lot less heady than my previous presentation. So if you let yourself go a little bit, it won't be quite as technical, but there will be a lot of visual uh, demonstrations. So um, yeah, here we go. Um, First off, I just wanna talk about home programs and how important home programs are just to maintain your health and function. As you guys know, there's a lot going on in your bodies and it's almost a full-time job just to keep you, you know, healthy and where you're at, let alone progress forward. So uh, home programs sort of, if you guys are working with trainers or physical therapists, your home programs, which are the in-betweens those sessions, are really important to keep that, um, 
keep that function and keep that progress going forward so that you have something new to bring to your trainer the next week. If you're not working with a professional or a trainer, then just finding ways in your own home to create movement in your body um, will keep you healthy and, and keep you, keep you um, functioning. I think we can all agree with that. You guys all know home programs are important. But for whatever reason, um, we can find ways in our life, things in our lives that seem to take priority over your home program or your home workout routine. So things like you don't have time, you can't transfer out of your chair, you're not sure what to do, you don't have someone to help you, you don't have equipment or the equipment is too expensive. Um, and if you guys have other barriers to why you may not be moving or working out or having a home program, I'd love to hear those because I want to troubleshoot with you why, why it's not happening in your lifestyle and, and figure out a way that we can weave it in. With this in mind, I want you guys to consider how if you don't have time for you know, an hour or two hour workout a day, that's fine. <laughs> None of us really do, right? There's a lot of things going on, but considering how short but frequent bouts of movement can keep you healthy. And in my previous presentations, we talked about stiff for your spine mobility, side bending, twisting, inside out, flexion, and fidgeting, right? If you guys don't know what that is, previous presentation is a good one to hit can't transfer out of your chair where chair exercises are an excellent place to start. There's a bunch all over the internet. We're going to talk about some tonight. Not sure what exercises to do. Revisit previous NorCal presentations, both from uh, my presentations and Rachel and Aaron's presentations. And then as Franklin mentioned, um, I do have a book available now uh, that I've co-authored with my, my partner, Theo. Um, and I can talk about that at the end that has 60 60 plus exercises in the book for you guys to explore. So you don't have a trainer to facilitate. Let's get creative, take ownership, find something that does work for you. Even if someone can just help you hook something up and then you take it from there. Um, I'll show you ways to do that tonight. And then not having equipment or the, the equipment is too expensive. You guys are all here. It's a good thing you're here today because we're going to talk about that. As Franklin said, under $50, um, we're going to keep it, keep it in budget. So keeping in mind, if we're picking out equipment that's less than $50, it's clearly not fancy. It's not this high tech e-stim units or robotic units, but that doesn't mean it's not effective. So Try to switch your brain a little bit, thinking that fancy things are effective things and effective things have to be fancy. So um, kind of uh, turning your perspective in that way. And then also understanding that simple, very affordable pieces combined with some creativity can have a huge return on investment for you guys. So um, just a few pieces that I'm gonna show you tonight can have huge benefits just depending on the way you look at it. And I hope you guys get some ideas today. So we're gonna be looking at four, just four pieces today. I call them props because um, equipment seems really like equipment should have a big footprint. Um, so I'm just gonna call them props. Um, you can find all of these props and more on, my, on our website, uh, which is at the bottom there, and then links out to go where to go find them. Um, the way I want you guys to think about the equipment that you're seeing tonight, um, in a few ways, okay? So the kind of obvious thing to look at equipment is like, oh, how can this equipment give me a workout? How can this resist me or give me that strength training workout? So that's very true, valid. But let's also consider a few other things. How can this equipment create some space or freedom for you to move? right? Gravity is a real force in um, bodies that are challenged um, with the muscle uh, activation. So giving your body some buoyancy and kind of taking away gravity can help, um, help you guys find movement. Kind of similar, looking at equipment and how equipment can assist you in the movement. So the equipment doesn't always have to resist you. It can assist you as well. And I'll briefly touch on that. And then also, um, especially right now, the world is very chaotic and there's a lot of tension and stress. Um, 
emotionally and mentally. And then also that can resonate in the, in the body too, in your tissues, and especially after neurological injury or neurological progression, um, finding ways to relax the body and release tension is going to be really, really important for maintaining your health um, and your, and, you know, staving off chronic disease for, um, in that way. So when I'm going through the exercise and the demos, don't just think about that first one. Oh, equipment needs to strength train. Think about these other um, ways that it can help you as well. All right, so full transparency. I just wanna be very clear with you guys. All of the props that I show are used either in my studio with my clients or by my SCI athletes at home, okay? So I don't um, recommend anything that I don't believe in or use personally or have my athletes use. Um, and I do wanna let you know that two of the props that I am sharing today, I, we are affiliates with Balanced Body. Affiliate just means that we partnered with Balanced Body so that um, when you use our links, we do get a little commission. However, it also means you guys get a 5% discount when you go through our links. I know 5% is not much, but it'll take care of the tax and it's better than nothing. So um, I just wanna have full transparency that we are affiliates with Balanced Body. All right, so how are we gonna use this information today? Whenever you guys are going, um, whenever you're participating or listening to presentations, you guys know that each of you are your own unique body and situation. And so things that are, um, or information that's conveyed to you, you have to sort of take with some judgment and some creativity on how it's gonna to apply to you, your unique situation. So use judgment on whether or not it's appropriate. And I've um, included a few sort of contraindications to get you thinking about that. And as I said, use creative thinking, visualize how these um, demonstrations might work in your unique case. Most of the demonstrations, I'm gonna try to show multi-level demos on um, inversions uh, of versions of how to use the equipment but also consider how, if you prefer to do your exercise or your movement laying down in bed, how might the demo look laying down or how might it look from a wheelchair or standing for those of you that are standing. So you can kind of um, turn, your, turn your perspective a little bit that, in that way and how it can work for you. Take notes on what intrigues you. Uh, as Franklin said, you guys are gonna get the presentation on Monday. So there's gonna be a lot of visuals um, going at you guys. Um, take notes and then purchase only what uh, catches your eye the most, all right? I don't want you guys going out and just buying everything for the sake of buying it and saying, oh, she told me to, you know, this was good and I should get it. Really think about why you're purchasing this piece and how you might use and explore it. Um, just be smart with, with that. Um, and then after you get your new props, just go play with them. Again, see how, you can take the demonstration, the ideas that I'm gonna give you today and then how it will work in your body. Again, revisit the presentation to get ideas and then feel and experiment how the equipment changes your experiment um, in comparison to how you might do it uh, without the equipment. So kind of going back to what I said earlier about how equipment can assist you, give you freedom and relax you see how the equipment changes that experience from what you've done in the past. And then lastly, um, if you guys are getting stuck, um, email me, let me know, uh, and we can, and we can get, a, get ourselves set up to work together. All right, so here they are, the top four for $50. The top right corner are some sensory balls. The top, sorry, the top left corner is the sensory balls. And those are running, the one I like is $3. Um, and that's from Balanced Body. The upper right corner is um, called a Franklin Squishy Ball. And it's just a, an inflated ball and that's $10. The bottom left corner is called a Peanut Ball. Um, and that runs anywhere between $14 and $20. So this is where the budget budges a little bit, but depending on what brand you get and what size you get, will change the price. And then the Resistance Band Kit um, runs about $23. You may be able to find it more expensive or less expensive. And I'm going to talk about what that kit involves here. So there it is. Those are the four pieces that we're going to explore. I do want to talk about a bonus piece because <laughs> of course I can't stay in a box. Um, 
figuring out how to get down on the floor is going to open up so many more doors for you. So I just wanted to share with you um, this small foam box. Uh, you can use any sort of box or stepping stool um, to help you get down on the floor and up on the floor. And of course, this is just one way to do it. But if you're one of those uh, athletes right now that's right on the edge of being able to pop down and pop back up in the chair, this is a nice demonstration. I'm going to let Theo... Um... Hey everyone. This is how I use the Foam Moon Block from uh, Balance Body. Uh, it's a great piece, it's not that expensive, and I use it a bunch. Has an easy way to grab it on the underside, Just stick your hand in there. Um, and this is how I use it to get on the floor. So I just stick it down, I lock the wheelchair, I scoot forward, and then this allows me to just have a place to come down if I want to uh, middle spot um, before I get all the way to the floor, um, but it is most useful going back up. So here I leave my legs. Um, I'm using them to support me a little bit as I do that, so that's why my knees aren't flopping out, but like my knees will also do this. And so sometimes I, uh, you know, just have to block them with my hands. Um, here I rest my leg up against the wheelchair. I put these under me so that when I lift up, my weight isn't all on my arms, it's going mostly on my legs. And then this. So you kind of get the gist with that. It's just essentially a stepping stool to get you down and up. Uh, I use the box in a lot of different other ways too, but um, that was kind of a bonus for you. Um, if you have questions on that, you guys can visit our YouTube or uh, talk to me uh, in an email after the presentation and we can talk about floor transfers. That's a whole nother topic. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go to the first one. We're gonna talk about the peanut. The peanut is a twist on the traditional physio ball, you know, the big round physio ball that you might see. The oblong shape makes it a little bit easier to control um, in the ways that I'm gonna show you. Um, you'll see what I mean by that. It's kind of like the ball doesn't roll around quite as much as a physio ball does. And it comes in um, several different sizes. This is the size that I'm gonna show in, that I use and then also the um, that I use in the video demonstration. So if you can kind of get a gist for how big the ball is. So uh, the first exercise that you can do with a peanut <laughs> is rollouts or arm pushes. Um, the video is gonna take you through a couple levels of uh, progression of a similar exercise. So you can start with you know level one and then work your way uh, through the exercises that are shown here. Um, I pre-recorded all of the video demonstrations today just so that we could get good angles of things and I could put little annotated um, text on it. So here we go. There's no sound on this one. So the first one is, again, you guys are on the floor. So uh, you can, if you can figure out a way to do this on an open table, that will work too. You can do forward pushes and side pushes. Um, again, this is sort of your level one introduction to the rollout uh, exercise. Level two is a roll out. So right here, you're getting a little bit of hip mobility and some spine mobility, shoulder stretching. Um, again, you can do this on a table from the chair if the table is open and clear. Kind of a switch up for the same exercises, what's called arch and curl. So you're having extension of the spine and then drawing in on the abdominals to pull up. And again, that's it's getting more advanced as we go through this video, but I just want to give you guys a visual of how that um, rollout will continue. You can also turn to the side and do side bend version, getting the ribs to open up and stretch. Yeah. And all of my videos that I have today, I realize my face looks so serious. <laughs> um, I'm very focused. Yeah. So you can up level these exercises too by doing them from a kneeling position, sitting on a foam roller or sitting on a bolster behind you. Again, there's the arch and curl. Again, this is starting to get quite advanced, but I want to make sure that you guys have a wide range of um, challenges uh, for anyone watching here. And then you can do the same thing side bend. And I sort of sped up the video, so don't go quite as fast. Great, so that's your first uh, exercise. Uh, again, the level one, the forward and side presses, level two, seated rollouts, and level three is um, kneeling rollouts and side bending. 
These are useful for creating some control in your posture, upper body movement and stretch, core work and spine mobility. And um, just my contraindication is just be aware of spinal movement limitations from any rods that you have. All right. Second one is uh, sacral decompression. Uh, for this one, it's useful to stretch the low back, decompress the nerves in the pelvis and the sacrum. It's a restful position to decrease stress and anxiety. And then posterior rib breathing practice. Um, just be careful that you don't do this one if you have a super pubic catheter because you don't want it to get pulled out. That. So um, um, you can see my. Oh, so um, this uh, position is challenging to get into. So I wanted to show Theo getting on the ball so that you guys have an idea because I can only reenact it. That. So um, if you can see my feet right here, my right foot is going to be farther over on that side so that when I flip over onto the ball, the foot is not caught with, uh, behind my by my right foot, or my left foot rather. So you can see I'm kind of bracing myself here and I'm just gonna put my chest over on that. My knees are gonna drop toward the floor here and I'm just watching this leg knowing that as I roll over, this knee is gonna drop down and I'm gonna be able to kind of get over that. So it's not the prettiest, but I come over like this and then I'm on the ball now. Um, this is a great spot. I'm kind of decompressing my thoracic spine here. What I'm most interested in is my lumbar spine and my sacrum though. And also what happens when I come over the ball is that I get to give my shoulders a little bit of shoulder stability work. Yeah. So you guys, can you guys hear that? You can hear him speaking, right? Going, taking you guys through that. Okay, good. So that was obviously on one of the stability balls. So I want to show you what it looks like on a smaller peanut ball. Um, so here's my version of it. So getting your feet in the right spot, making sure that they don't get tangled. Yeah, dropping onto it, kind of a graceful fall down. And right here, it's really just about finding relaxation and allowing your back to open up. And it feels really, really great. You could take some breaths to increase the space of your low back by focusing your breath into your low back, expanding your ribs from behind. That's called posterior rib, rib breathing. So that's sacral decompression. The third exercise for your peanut um, is going to be a supported quadruped. So this is great for anyone who can't quite get into quadruped safely or feels a little bit nervous getting on hands and knees. Um, and so with the peanut, you can put that underneath your body. So face planting is not an option. Um, we'll show, I'll show you some chest lifts, transition to hands, and then weight shifting and wiggling. And again, this is great for loading your upper body, strengthening your triceps, um, strengthening your upper back for posture. And again, I'm practicing quadruped. Just be careful if you have a super pubic catheter so that it doesn't get pulled out. So once you get on the ball, you get on it kind of the same way, but there's your chest lifts. You're just gonna lift your spine up. You can push through your hands a little bit there, your elbows. If you need to bring the ground a little bit up higher, you can put your elbows on some yoga blocks and that will help you be able to push through your elbows and not your hands. And then practicing the transition from hands to elbows. If you're nervous about going side to side, wedge yourself in between the couch and the coffee table, and then you really can't tip over side to side. Yeah. And I think the last one is just a weight shifting from side to side, getting used to the right and left weight shifting. That would be a pre-crawling exercise. And then just feeling a wiggle on the ball. All right, your last one for the peanut, this is an advanced uh, exercise. You're gonna be um, straddling the peanut in sort of a horseback uh, situation. The photo um, is a slightly different version than what I'm gonna show, but that's essentially it. It's a great for practicing your posture and control. Really, really, really great for stretching your pelvic floor and your hips and your inner thigh muscles. It's a great alternative to level up any of your seated exercises. And then you can try any of your upper body exercises in this position. So let's look at it derpy face. There we go. So getting into it again, it's a little bit of a pickle, but I think if you are doing this exercise, you will be able to sort of finagle your way onto the ball there. Um, again, use different props and furniture so that you don't overshoot it and you can kind of leverage your way up. So there's going to be just balancing one hand coming off the um, sort of squishiness of the ball makes that pretty challenging because 
if your weight isn't distributed properly, you'll fall off to one side. Next one is just a weight shift. So getting yourself to wiggle sort of back and forth. If you have a little push off through your knees, you can do that. And then rocking horse, this one's challenging where you're rocking sort of forward and back. Again, the give of the peanut makes this really hard. So that's a nice one. Again, um, body awareness and, and getting yourself into weight shifting for sit to stands or squats. All right. All right, so we're gonna move on to prop number two. Um, this is the Franklin squishy ball. It's a seven inch inflatable ball. Um, this, the one that I like is from the Franklin method. It's just, I know it's good quality, but any sort of inflatable ball will do. And you can use the ball both um, fully inflated and then slightly deflated. And I'll show you um, what that is as we go here. So the first one is um, using this ball for neck mobility. Um, your neck gets really stiff. It can be sort of your, your way that you, um, change where your center of mass is and where you dictate um, how you move the chair. So uh, the neck can get stiff and overused. There's a lot of important tubes in your neck. You have the spinal cord, of course, the nerves, blood vessels, lymph channels. So keeping this area healthy and mobile is really, really important. For this one, just be aware of hardware infusion limitations that you have in your neck. All right. Um, this example is gonna use a fully inflated ball, but I want you to deflate the ball by about a third when you do this. And it's really simple. You just place the ball underneath your neck and rock side to side. You can have your legs out long or bent up. And when it's deflated, you'll have a little bit better alignment in your neck, just showing the basic concepts there. Very simple. And again, that's um, neck health and mobility, and then also some relaxation there for your nervous system. I also like using the squish ball for a lateral and side stretch. Uh, it's useful. So the this image here um, is one of my good friends. Um, he's laying over the ball to help open the top side of his spine. So for those of you who feel like you have one really tight side, you would basically lay on the opposite side over the top of the ball and that will open up that side. This is a really, really great one. Um, spine mobility is important for organ health and um, opening up your ribs will help you be able to take fuller breaths as well. So we'll show that demonstration here. You can just get yourself really cozy. So if you just bring your arm up overhead, that'll open up that side body just a little bit more. Make sure your head is supported. And again, this is one of those ones where you're just gonna rest and relax in it and breathe into it. The body rolling is really nice. You get both the rotational stretch and then also the ball underneath you sort of acts like a foam roller and that it uh, mobilizes some of the tissues in there. Sort of an up level option is to use it as a little bit of a support for side planking or rib lifting. So if you're working on engaging one side of your obliques you can use the ball to kind of give you a head start and then you're working to lift off of the ball. Fantastic. And then the last one, this might be one of my favorite exercises, it's called 3D pelvis. Um, basically you put the ball underneath your tailbone and you move your hips around. It's great for hip mobility, to stretch your low back. Um, and then depending on what kind of movements you're doing, you can do low abdominal and low back strengthening. For this one, um, my video is actually on YouTube. So let me reshare real quick. All right. It's a way to bring really mm -hmm. nice awareness to the pelvic area and then some you great mobility help. as well. You might need just a little help getting set up, but for the let me just make sure you guys can hear that. I have to click, oh yeah most part you can do it on your own. You'll need a ball about this size that's slightly deflated which has some give. You'll start on the floor. You can have your legs over uh, just draped over a pillow and we'll take the ball and kind of stick it in underneath you and then lay yourself back over the ball. You may want to have the ball a little bit lower so it's just about at the sacrum or your tailbone. And then from here, you can do nice mobility in the hips, rocking side to side. You can also do 
pelvis tilting into your posterior tilting, tucking the tail, and then letting your tail go on the other side of the ball. And then you can play with different movements like um, circles and sort of figure eights or infinity patterns mimicking a pelvic walking position. Another way that you can do this exercise is with your feet up on top of the couch, which I actually like better. Uh, so for this one, you'll just have your legs up on top. Again, you may need some help getting the ball underneath you, but you'll have the ball just right here. And you can do those same movements with your hips rocking side to side and pushing through your elbows to make that happen. Or if you want to have more isolation in your trunk, you can work those obliques. And again, anterior, posterior, pelvic tilting and uh, hip circles. So I think you guys get the gist for that one. Um, again, that one's really, really nice great for uh, if you've been sitting all day just to get out of the chair and, and roll the hips out. I think um, that just feels, looks like it feels good um, just looking at it. Um, all right, so I'm gonna come bring us back to the presentation. So that was it for the squish ball. Um, we're gonna get into a little bit, uh, just this one is the spike ball. Um, I like the orange one, but you can really use any of them. Um, and this uh, tool is a tool I use for sensory integration, intervention and integration. So um, it's important that we increase our body awareness by stimulating the surface of the skin with in interesting textures. Um, why is this important? If you're looking to utilize some of the limbs that you're not currently feeling quite as much, um, you gotta give it some sort of demand to respond to. So brushing the skin with a uh, interesting texture will bring your brain to that area and then also allow your body to sort of sense and feel like, oh, okay, there, this part of my body still exists, it's still attached to me and I wanna send some signals there. Um, I highlighted hands and feet because those are sensory hot spots. You have a lot of sensory uh, information coming from your hands and a lot of sensory information coming from your feet, um, whether you can perceive that or not. Um, and so just placing the textured surface in your hands, playing it with your hands, and then also rubbing it on the bottom of the feet. Um, this is sort of like the fancy tool. You can also use a hairbrush. Then it would be free because you probably already have that. All right. And that's all I have for that one. That's just a simple tool. So this is where we get into the good stuff. Um, this stackable resistance band kit is awesome. Um, usually the kits will come with multiple levels of resistance. Um, and then specifically uh, choosing the kit that has this carabiner option. So not, not choosing the resistance bands that already come with handles, but the carabiner option. And the reason for that is so that you can connect multiple bands to the same handle or to the same loop um, for heavier tension. So if the heaviest tension is not heavy enough, enough for you, you can stack multiple bands together to make it even more heavy. Um, and there, there's a reason that you might want that. And I'll, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. It comes with, usually comes with a pair of handles and a pair of Velcro crafts. So if you have challenging hand uh, grip function, you can use the Velcro crusts on your wrists or your upper arms um, and then on your thighs and your ankles. And I'll show, show you that in a little bit. Um, and then they usually come with this door anchor. So we need to talk about how you're gonna anchor the band uh, first before we can talk about the exercises that come from it. Um, this sometimes takes some, uh, this can take some initial help getting it all set up. But once you have it set up in a place that um, you're good with, you can kind of just manipulate it for the most part yourself or with minimal help, all right? So you'll need to find a sturdy place to loop the band through. So one of the options is to find a sturdy place to loop the band, the leg of a desk or a railing or a grab bar even. Or um, you can use the door anchor that comes in the kit. So I'll just, um, this video <laughs> shows how to use the door anchor. Um, just disconnect any pieces and then loop it through the bottom of the door anchor. There's a loop there. And then it becomes sort of this uh, pull through. Make sure you use the thick end of the door anchor and then it just pops through and you close the door and then you have a really solid anchor to push or pull from. Um, just make sure that you're 
you're using the side of the door that swings away from you so that if um, the door were, for, were to, for some reason, unlatch, you're safe because it's pulling in, um, in towards the door jam. So with that, uh, you can put all your bands there and just get yourself set up. And then once, you're, once you have all that ready, you can just switch between whatever band you're looking for. What's nice about the carabiners too, that if you're using uh, grip gloves and you attach your hands to the handles, you really just have to switch between the carabiners. You don't have to reattach, like take off the grip glove and then reattach it to another handle. You guys know that takes time. So you just attach your hand to the handle one time and then you have someone help you switch out the carabiners. Another option is to look for a place to attach um, bands to your headboard. So if you enjoy doing uh, exercises in your bed, um, if like the floor is challenging to get down to and you wanna do exercises in the bed, you can um, look for a place to do that. I've seen people loop bands through like slatted, slatted uh, headboards, or you can uh, create a bandy board. So a bandy board um, is just sort of a cheap knockoff version of the Pilates springboard, but basically it's just two two by four boards with eye hooks um, attached very securely to the wall. So just make sure you get someone that knows what they're doing to help you attach them to the wall. And they can be placed anywhere in your home, designated workout space, or if you wanna attach them just above your headboard, um, you can attach them there, right? That would be function over form, I guess, but hey, what are you gonna do? So here's another uh, video of me working with um, one of my friends. He had a bandy board in his garage, and so he made home visits really, really awesome. And then he could do his homework at home too in between sessions. Nice. So he's got some stuff going on in the wall in addition to his bandy board, but you can see how the band just basically pulls out. And he's got a table in front, um, so you can do this on a table, a bed, or just the floor. Yep. Once you have your bands anchored to something, there's a lot of exercises you can do, and that's what we're gonna we're gonna show for the rest right here. I got about ten minutes, so we're gonna face um, facing towards your anchor. Um, you can do a bunch of exercises, kind of more of your mainstream pulling exercises that you might find. Um, you can consider attaching the band to your upper arm. So if holding the band kind of feels uh, unstable for you because of tricep function use the Velcro straps to attach them to the upper arm. And then if you feel like you're getting pulled out of the chair, just recline your chair slightly. So um, this is the video of me just showing how you could use your upper arms as a way to work your shoulders and back muscles. Um, your triceps also cross over your shoulder joints. So by doing this, you're also working the long head of your tricep. So there's that regular rows, again, reclining in your chair. Uh, if you need to, make sure your feet are planted. You can push through your feet. This is called chest expansion, straight arm pulls. Let's see, did I include anything else in that one? Oh, T pulls, yeah. And I'm just using the yellow band. You don't need a heavy band for these because um, most likely you're gonna have some uh, challenge holding yourself just upright in your posture. So uh, use a lighter band and challenge the posture and the arms at the same time. You can also um, recline your power chair all the way down and do those same exercises. So if you feel like you're gonna get pulled forward, just recline back and, and do all of those exercises. Again, you can attach to the upper arm. I'm just gonna skip that. So facing away from your anchor, um, keep yourself tall as always. Challenge yourself by lifting yourself off the back of the chair. This is my friend Katie. Um, I know she's not using a bandy board, but the concepts are the same. And she's gonna do a few exercises challenging the front of her shoulders while holding posture. So try not to get kicked back into the chair. So you have the serve -a tray exercise. Um, these are called hug a tree. These are just the Pilates names. Um, Chest fly is another name for it. Um, and this is a lot harder than it looks, <laughs> trying to stay up off the back of the chair. And then she goes into circles. So again, once you have your band anchored, you can just um, face towards the, towards the anchor, away from the anchor. Um, I'm gonna show sideways to the anchor as well. Um, you can just play with different orientations and have a whole exercise routine just seated 
changing which way you're facing. Um, with these, these sideways ones, um, your body kind of gets pulled into the anchor by the resistance band. So let yourself lean a little bit away from the anchor and, and try to work through um, that stability through your spine, that lateral stability, so you don't get pulled one way or the other. Mm -hmm. okay, that's the camera's on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for this one, um, just keep in mind that you can use multiple bands. So for my friend Alana, she um, is working on triceps, but also wants to make sure that she's not um, losing the control in her scapula as well. So we hooked a band to her upper arm so that she's working the shoulder and then a lighter band um, on, the, on the forearm so she can also work her triceps kind of in unison with that shoulder stability. All right, so lots of different positions I showed Working in the chair, we sort of already saw uh, working uh, in supine or laying on your back. Again, you can use the cuffs or pull the handles up onto your upper arms. Um, just make sure that you're in a comfortable position through the rest of your body. All right, Steph, let's go. Oh, circles too, yeah, circles. You can switch the direction of your circles. This is make my shoulders feel good just watching. And then um, you can also place it in your hands, of course, just regular pull downs, arm circles. Yeah, working on breath and control. Great. You can also change your orientation to your anchor again, sideways, uh, working on side lying with some rotation. What's nice about this too is the band kind of pulls your arm in that punch position. So if you have trouble reaching your arm forward um, while seated, this is a nice way to work the punching motion um, and the band sort of assists it. All right, so um, this was a big one for me um, being a, a trainer and I was lifting limbs and, and helping people move their limbs and so when I discovered how springs and bands supported limbs, I think I put on like 20 years on my career. So um, your caretakers or whoever stretches you is gonna really love this one um, because it basically unweights your limb so that your caretaker can just guide the limb through space and not have to physically hold the limb. So of course, I'm just showing here, you can also work on um, some marching patterns if you are unable to do that by yourself, the resistance gives you a little bit of that little tug to get you going. You can start it from a leg long, a long leg position or in the short position. Um, you can do this in all sorts of ways, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. All right, this is another great one using the bands to assist you in spinal extension. So for the lecture that I did, the presentation I did in the past about um, posture and finding extension in the spine, this is a great way. I just looped two bands together, carabinered them together, um, and then anchored them pretty high. Wrap the band around your back. Let's play that again. Wrap the band behind your back and I realize that's a black band, uh, but you can play with where in your back you wanna have the band hit you. And then allowing yourself to stretch into the C curve of your spine and then allowing the band to help you pull into the full extension of the spine. This is a great one. I use this one a lot with my uh, athletes in the studio. Yeah. All right. Um, this is another one. I don't have a video for this, but if you are one that likes doing sit-ups and just can't feel like you can get that full sit-up, using your resistance bands to assist you on the way down and then also assist you on the way up so you don't feel like you have to use or rely on momentum to kind of huck yourself up out of the sit-up. You can slow it down a little bit and use the resistance and actually feel your abdominals working for you. Um, so those examples that I just showed are ways that you can use the equipment to assist you in movement, um, especially if it's not all the way there, right? So um, kind of switching your brain and like, okay, resistance bands, they have the name in it of resistance, but switch it a little bit and say, how can these bands help me move and create freedom and space so that I can move? So I want you guys to pick one or two that you want to try and get them. I mean, it's low investment and then just play with it. Um, if you guys post to social media at all, make sure you tag us so that we can give you some accolades or even some suggestions on how to improve what you're doing. Um, I'm very active on the Zebrafish Instagram. So um, 
you can interact with me very easily there. Uh, you can also email me um, if you guys have questions about uh, any of the exercises that I showed today. Um, just be aware that if you come to me with a specific kind of case and you tell me your whole life story and diagnosis, um, there's only so much I can do to help you without proper assessment. So I'm happy to help you with little tweaks and things, but um, yeah, you can feel free to email me or interact with me on Instagram. Um, if you haven't already, uh, or if you didn't already know, um, the book from the ground up has lots and lots and lots of exercises and tips on programming. And again, how to use some of the exercise equipment um, or both equipment and non-equipment. So you can check that out as well online. And Franklin, do you want me to talk more about the book right now or? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Cool. Um, so my little plug for the book. So um, this uh, resource I co-authored with Theo St. Francis, who is uh, an SCI athlete that I've been working with since 2013. It's been a labor of love. We spent three years on this book. Um, the book is monstrous, meaning it has a lot of information. And it's definitely one of those resources that you'll um, pick up and read a little bit and then put it down and then pick it up again and find something new and then put it down. So um, it is big and can be intimidating, but it's also meant to come back to multiple, multiple times. Um, the book has foundational information on neuroscience and um, recovering from a neurological injury. And then also our framework for um, recovery and progression. Uh, which takes you through our four steps that we believe in. And then um, the last section of the book, as promised, has a ton of exercises that you can, um, we, we showed the root exercises, but then all of the information that comes before this chapter gives you ways to think uh, creatively on how these exercises can be applied to your body and how you can modify them or up-level them uh, for your situation. Um, yeah, this book um, was both written again by myself, a trainer, and also Theo, who's the athlete. So it has an interesting perspective, both from Theo's side and my side of the equation. Um, it's not one of those just, oh, she doesn't really know what it's like. She, you know, that information's not quite relevant for me. No, Theo put his heart and soul into this as well. So um, it comes from both of us. And I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. It's a great resource for you. And is he still doing readings? Um of the chapters? Yeah, we we actually took a little break on that just to focus on some other things, but I think we're gonna reconvene that in a couple, um, in like maybe a month or so, maybe we'll get through the holidays. But on our Instagram, we have, um, Theo's done beautiful readings of the book for free. So you can log into Instagram, go to our IG TV series. And I think he's done six or seven book readings and they're all about like half an hour long. So it's a good chunk. We also have a chapter, the first chapter for free online. You can download it. Um, actually it's more than the first chapter. There's a few other sample pages too. So lots of ways that you guys can preview the material, see if it's worth the investment. Um, and if you have questions on it, please let us know. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So we have some time for some questions. First question, um, someone who has been in a chair for 16 years and, uh, her spine below the stabilizing rods has deteriorated uh, from sort of from movement, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're asking that uh, if they were to use the dumbbells, uh, which tends to cause more pain, um, is that common from your experience to use dumbbells? Someone who's experiencing that type of pain from a result of uh, deteriorating rods? Um. So just based off of what you've told me, it sounds like gravity has sort of taken over. Um, and so the spine is not quite stabilized with the muscles that are supposed to be working to stabilize the spine. And then the rods also not there, it's, it's just below the rods. So using dumbbells is going to enhance the effect of gravity, right? So dumbbells are gonna weigh you down further. What I would suggest you using is the resistance bands to help you create a sense of float so that you can lengthen through those vertebrae and help you um, lift off those vertebrae so they're not quite as compressed. Um, some of the things like the 3D pelvis might feel great for you too, just to give that low back some freedom and not quite as much, uh, I keep saying the word compression, but yeah, compression. Yeah, I'd stay away from the dumbbells. Use something okay. a little bit more airy. Alrighty, next question. We have someone who um, is 
uh, quite heavy set individual and they're asking uh, for the ball and peanut exercises, uh, what substitute there might be available? Oh, I would just use a, like a bolster, like a big pillow or a bolster. Those will do very similar uh, for the laying on them, not the rollouts, but for laying on them. Yeah, find a, a strong pillow, a big sturdy, fluff, um, not a fluffy pillow, a firm pillow. That will do wonders too for just decompressing the spine. Yeah. Okay. And this question is actually posed by a couple of quadriplegics uh, who want to know some of the steps or said, Basically, some of the uh, motions that you demonstrated, they just cannot do it um, on the floor. It's hard to get on the floor. How would you suggest that we do it on the, on the bed, I guess, in a bed setting? Right. Mm -hmm. On the bed. So um, as I said, if you're looking to use the resistance bands on your bed, you'll need to anchor something above your bed. Um, again, function over form. So if you're <laughs> into aesthetics, you might have to just let that go. Um, if you're looking, think about orientation as well. So if it's really hard to pull the arms down by your side against the resistance, you could consider turning yourself around or having someone help you turn around so that the, um, the resistance bands support you drawing your arms down by your side. Um, Think of the bands then assisting the motion of bringing your arms down by your side as opposed to resisting the arms coming down by your side. Um, so if that's that would be your answer to using the resistance bands. But also consider that just moving your collarbones, rolling your collarbones around, um, if you can still see me, rolling your collarbones around like this will give you a really, really great opening in your neck and activating your shoulder stabilizers. And you don't really need equipment for that at all. So doing what you can to roll the shoulders. I always love that exercise. I always give it to athletes that have challenge doing stuff at home. That's like the number one, keeping the neck open. Okay. Next question. If you could only spend $25, what would be the, the prop that you would uh, suggest that I get? Uh, what are your goals? Ooh. <laughs> um, I think the resistance. What's your What's your favorite one, Stephanie? If you had a budget of twenty five dollars, I would say the resistance bands. There's so much you can do with that. Um, if you If you wanted to get creative, you could, could create a sling for yourself to drape your body over. Um, if you, you know, thinking of ways that you could replicate some of the other stuff just with your resistance bands, you put some towels down, drape yourself over the top, put the bands underneath your hips, move your hips around. That would replicate the 3D pelvis. So yeah, the resistance bands. Okay. Next question. Uh, when you were doing the, uh, the neck exercise, uh, what, uh, person's not, I'm trying to interpret what they were saying. Uh, what specific benefit am I likely to receive from that? I think you mentioned that there are all sorts of sort of nerves uh, that are around the neck area, but why don't I let you answer that? Yeah, sure, sure. So there's lots of, I call them tubes. There's lots of tubes that run from your brain down into your body. It's sort of like this super highway of information and nutrients that happens from a super important piece of your body, your brain down to your body. So just allowing the space uh, in between those tubes to be free and clear. Um, also too, you can get a lot of tension in the back of your neck when your posture isn't holding you up and you're counterbalancing with this um, sort of dropped head forward. So all of the muscles in the back of your neck get short because you wanna still look up. So by rolling the ball in the back of your neck, it's just gonna open up and almost massage the, the base of your skull. Think of it as like someone giving you like a little, a little massage in the base of your skull. Uh, yeah, that's my simple answer. Okay. Next question. I'd like to buy a band board to attach to a wall. Uh, I'm a walking quad that need to strengthen my legs. Can you recommend an affordable one that is compatible with the bands you previewed here? Okay. So um, the bandy board, the picture that I showed, that was completely DIY. It's two by fours with eye hooks, and then they were um, installed to like like securely installed to the wall. Um, I Whatever that cost is, two by fours plus eye hooks and then the resistance bands. If you wanted to go up a notch, um, Balanced Body has what's called a springboard, which is about $400 for a piece of plywood with eye hooks. So <laughs> I think if you wanna go for the actual piece of equipment that inspired my DIY, 
It's called a springboard. You can find it on um, the website that I shared with you, zebrafirstneuro.com backslash props. Um, and then I like the resistance bands. They're a much more affordable option than the springs. The springs are, have a stronger resistance, but they're much more expensive. So I'd go with um, the DIY option, two by fours, eye hooks, and the resistance bands. All right, that's expensive too. Yeah. Okay, next question. Uh, for the sacral decompression, instead of lying on the floor with a peanut or a ball, would uh, just lying on your stomach uh, be enough? Um, put something underneath your stomach or your hips that allows the opening. If you're laying on your stomach, especially if you're on a, a soft, squishy surface like a bed, you're most likely, your spine's gonna sort of like sink into the bed. So give yourself some lift in your hips and then um, the downward traction will help decompress the spine. So it's almost like a, you wanna invert yourself. You wanna almost like turn your spine upside down so that gravity can kind of pull your spine open. So yeah. Okay. And I think this is the last question from a paraplegic interested in strengthening triceps, lats and upper back without uh, placing undue burden uh, on the rotator cuff. Any uh, suggestions? Undue stress yeah. on rotator. Oh, okay. Um, so if you're not wanting to put burden on the rotator cuff, I'm assuming that you have some sort of rotator cuff injury. So rehabbing that rotator cuff is going to be really important because stabilizing the scapula and the shoulder joint is number one before you can do any of the big movers like the deltoids and the triceps. So making sure that you have a really healthy shoulder girdle is important. And then um, working um, the sort of larger muscles uh, around that. Um, I would also make sure that you're integrating your back muscles and your trunk muscles and your core muscles with those two. So not over relying on um, a table or something like that to stabilize because then all of the tension goes straight to that rotator cuff. If you're not integrating everything and having all the players on the team work for you, then it's going to sort of zone in on your trouble areas. So. Okay. One last question got snuck in. I don't know if this is appropriate for you to address, but I'll pose it to you and feel free to tell me. When I push up in my wheelchair, my lower back often cracks. Is it good to let that pressure off the lower back? Is cracking kind of the equivalent of letting the pressure off the back? Um, like I'm th like a pressure release, like like dipping up. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then sort of like a releasing crack. It sounds I, like it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that to me with just the information that you've given me, that doesn't sound bad to me. That sounds like you've sort of decompressed the spine and allow that space to, to come through. Yeah. Okay, that is the last question. Thank you again, Stephanie. Um, everyone, uh, just as a reminder, you'll get an email on Monday morning at 8 o'clock California time with a link to the recording uh, of tonight's presentation. And once again, thanks to Stephanie and also thanks to the Re Foundation for uh, yeah. allowing us to, to do this. So uh, appreciate having um, you all um, on this presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good night and uh, I look forward to seeing Stephanie next month. Yeah, actually in a couple of weeks, Franklin. I think it's November. Oh, that's right. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Before right. Thanksgiving, yeah. Sounds good. Okay, <laughs> Stephanie. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye.